Hi guys, this is Megan from the blog WilsonHomestead.com and today I want to share with you what we eat in a week. This is going to be kind of a cook with me, what we eat for dinners in a week. We do a lot of GAPS food and a lot of nutrient dense foods and we cook a lot of organ meats and we also buy our food in bulk, pretty much all of our food in bulk. We go to the store once every six months and we're building up to going once a year. But I've had a lot of questions about how we cook with bulk food. It seems like the average person goes to the store every week and they buy small quantities of things. So I've had a lot of people curious about how we cook with bulk items, like how I use 50 pounds of onions in time. So I thought I would start making these what we eat in a week videos. They're realistic. These meals are not fancy. I didn't make anything extra special just because I was filming a video. This is really just how we eat. This video is in collaboration with Laura from Our Oily House, and I'm so excited to be doing this collaboration. She has a fabulous blog and YouTube channel. She is a mom of four children, and she's actually pregnant with her fifth. She's actually due in November, and by the time you're seeing this video, she may have already had her baby, which is so exciting. So make sure you go check out her channel and watch her other What We Eat In A Week video and see if she had her baby, because I I know, I am just dying to see a baby. <laughs> she is an essential oil expert. She shares so much knowledge and recipes and ways to use essential oils on her blog. She is like my go-to person. When I have this question about essential oils, I always go and look at her blog first. She shares all kinds of awesome food recipes on her blog and YouTube channel as well. And she also makes some of the most fabulous homemade skincare products. She makes face masks and soap and lotion and sugar scrubs and candles and like all sorts of super cool things. So you definitely have to go check out her channel and I will link her channel and the other video that goes along with this one in the description box and up in the cards so they'll be really easy to find. But let's get right into what we eat in a week. So for the first night we had oxtail soup. We didn't have a lot of soups around here. Be on the GAPS diet every now and then. We are really used to soups. They're just really great, easy, healthy meals. I can get a lot of bone broth in them and healthy meats and vegetables. I really like one pot meals. And especially going into fall and winter, soups are just gonna be a really great staple. So for the oxtail soup, I had gotten out the oxtail from the freezer the day before, so it was all thawed out. And I got out my big stock pot. I always like to make usually a big pot of soup. I poured a little olive oil on the bottom and I heated it up and fried the oxtail. I just got it browned on both sides. You don't have to get it very cooked through, just having that little bit of browning on it will give it such a lovely flavor. Once it was all fried, I poured in several gallons of water. But again, I like to make huge batches of soup. I had half of like a gallon can of organic diced tomatoes. I poured about a quarter, so it was probably about a quart of diced tomatoes. I chopped up like three or four onions. I chopped up a bunch of garlic and I put those in there. I had a little tiny miniature cabbage in the refrigerator from our garden. It was the one and only cabbage we grew all year. But I figured this was a great way to use it. I chopped up about 10 carrots, I think. I also found another little Tupperware of diced onions in the refrigerator and I added it to the soup as well. When I make soups like this, I tend to just kind of do a fridge dump. <laughs> Whatever random ingredients in the refrigerator that I can find, I will add to the soup. We had, they were kind of leftovers from other meals. I didn't want them to go to waste, and so this is just a great way to use up leftovers and not let any of your bulk food go to waste. I also added salt, pepper, oregano, thyme, and parsley, and then I put the lid on and simmered it until the carrots were soft. Then I pulled the whole oxtail out of the soup and I picked all the little bits of meat off of it, and that was just a really great nourishing, healthy meal, and because the oxtail had bones in it, all the broth in the soup had all the great benefits of bone broth. Night number two, we had actually the same soup, I just changed it. I didn't want everyone to get bored of the same soup, especially since my husband takes soups for lunches. So that morning I had gotten a spaghetti squash from upstairs in our storage room. We had grown about 83 pounds of squash this gardening season. So we have a lot of squash upstairs to use up. And I absolutely love spaghetti squash in soup. It is so good. Next year, I think I only want to grow spaghetti squash. That was like my all-time favorite. So I roasted, I think, two smaller spaghetti squash. I just covered them in olive oil and put salt and pepper on them, and I put them in a 350 degree oven, and I just cooked them until they got soft. After a few hours, I kept checking them. I would poke them with a fork, and once they were soft, I took them out. These ones did get a little overcooked because I think I left around a couple errands and I forgot about them, but they were still really good, and they weren't burnt. They were just a little bit 
more cooked than I normally get them. I used some pork from the refrigerator in this. I shredded it up. This was pork that I actually made with my husband's crockpot soup that, I, that he takes for his lunches. So I just added all the butternut squash and the shredded pork and I heated it all up and that was so delicious. It made it so different just adding that spaghetti squash. On the third night, we made crispy potatoes. These are one of my go-to super easy meals if it was a busy day. I think that day was a full day of filming and writing blog posts. A cast iron pan is essential for making these. You just get, I put a bunch of lard in the cast iron pan and I heat it up on medium heat until it's really nice and hot. You can just, if you put your hand just above the oil in the pan, you can feel it, it's really hot. I had diced up a whole bunch of maybe like five or six potatoes and, and a whole onion. And I put all of the on onion and potato in the pan while it was nice and hot. And you just dump it all in and then you don't touch it for a little while and you only stir it a few times because this makes it so that it doesn't stick to the pan, it gets a nice and lovely brown and super crispy but soft on the inside, they're just absolutely delicious. When they were almost done, I put in some meat that I got out of the freezer. It was some already cooked meat. It was another one of those crock pot situations where I had extra meat, so I just cut it all up and I put it in the freezer for a quick meal like this. I really like having cooked meat on hand for meals like this. So I put a bunch of that in and finished cooking it and while it finished cooking it thawed the meat out. I salt and peppered it and added oregano and paprika. And then when we ate this we put some of my home canned candied jalapenos on this and it was just delicious. I will link the recipe for these jalapenos because they are my favorite thing ever. The next night was also kind of a crazy day and Luke didn't get home until like 7 o'clock, a little after 7 o'clock. And he normally is home at like 5.30. So it was just a really strange night. So I ended up just making a quiche and it turned out to be absolutely delicious and it was so easy. So I took about eight-ish eggs. All of these things I just totally make up. Like I just put some and I've gotten like so ridiculously relaxed with not using recipes. So again, I think like all of these recipes I just like made up. I didn't even look at a recipe. When you cook all of your food from scratch, you pretty quickly get good at just putting some in and knowing what will taste good. So probably about eight eggs and I put a splash of coconut milk that we get from Costco. My husband is actually allergic to dairy so whenever we're, I'm making a meal for all of us I don't add dairy in. I put salt and pepper in the eggs and then I got out my cast iron pan and I got a jar of home canned green beans. I strained off the liquid, I dumped the beans into the cast iron pan and then I got some of the last tomatoes from our garden for the year. There was a bunch of cherry tomatoes and I just kind of dispersed them through the green beans. I just kind of arranged them in the pan and then I poured the egg mixture over them. And then I cooked that in the oven at 350 degrees for about 50 minutes. And that was just super easy, super healthy. It had some vegetables and protein from the eggs and it was really good. I actually put some salsa on mine and Luke used some more candied jalapenos. The next night we had something a little bit interesting. It was cow tongue soup. So I put the cow tongue in my cast iron Dutch oven this is something that I cooked in the oven, otherwise I would have used my big stock pot, but that can't go in the oven, so I used my cast iron Dutch oven, which was fine, which is a little smaller, so it was like almost overflowing at certain points, and I didn't get to add the diced tomatoes in, which was fine. And then I covered it in water. Just enough water to cover the whole tongue. And then I coarsely chopped two onions and a whole bunch of cloves of garlic, because we love our garlic around here. and salt and pepper and then I put the lid on and I put it in a 300 degree oven for six hours and the key with this is to cook it low and slow otherwise it can be tough and rubbery and not super good so either cook it in the crock pot or in a really low oven for a really long time. After six hours I took it out and I added a bunch of chopped carrots. I was gonna add diced tomatoes at this point but it was almost overflowing so I skipped those and it was still really delicious. And then I put it back in the 300 degree oven for another hour and that was enough time to get the carrots soft. And then after that I took out the cast iron dutch oven, I took the tongue out and I put it on a cutting board so it could cool off a little bit because you want to peel the skin off before you eat it because the skin is really thick and not something you want to eat. So you peel the skin off the tongue and then I just chopped up the whole thing and put it back in the soup and then it was ready to go. I just added a little bit more seasoning once I was able to taste it. The next night we had burrito bowls and these are some of our favorites. So I cooked some dried black beans in my Instant Pot. I actually always use dried beans. We never buy the cans of beans. These are a lot more expensive. This is another really great way to save money and a way to buy food in bulk is to always buy like 25 or 50 pound bags of dried beans. So I put in two cups of beans, eight cups of water, a bay leaf, a teaspoon of salt, and a splash of apple cider vinegar. 
The apple cider vinegar breaks down the indigestible parts of the beans. So I always add apple cider vinegar to beans just for that reason. And then I set my instant pot to high pressure, just regular pressure cook, and I cook them for 30 minutes. I just let them naturally release because I wasn't in a hurry. And they were perfectly tender, but not too mushy. I really like cooking beans in the Instant Pot. Once those were all done, I strained them out in the sink, and then I actually cooked some frozen chicken breasts in the Instant Pot as well. So I started this really early in the day, because I used the Instant Pot twice. The beans and the chicken cook for different amounts of time, otherwise I would have cooked them together. But I put some water, and the chicken breasts, and some seasonings like oregano, and salt and pepper, and paprika, and thyme, I think, and then I cooked that. Once it was done, I took it out and shredded it, and then I put the beans in a bowl and topped with shredded chicken and we put some salsa on it. It's really great with sour cream, you're actually out of it. So you can also use kefir if you're out of sour cream. Normally I would add lettuce to this too, but we were out of that also. So we just made do it with what we had and it was absolutely delicious. And the last night I made lentil soup. But to start, I'll put a splash of olive oil on the bottom and cut up an onion, some garlic, and then I'll put them in there with the olive oil and cook them until the onion's soft. Once that's done, I'll add three cups of lentils and 12 cups of water, along with the rest of that can of diced tomatoes before it goes bad, a bay leaf, some dried basil, dried oregano, a splash of apple cider vinegar, and salt and pepper. And then I'll cover it and cook it for at least an hour. I want the lentils to be nice and soft and mushy and not like hard pebbles. So at least an hour, if you cook it a little more, like if you, if you forget, they'll be just fine. We also ate the leftover chicken breast from the the meal from the night before along with our lentil soup because there wasn't protein in the lentil soup so we had we split the chicken breast between the three of us and that covered the protein part and that is all seven dinners that we had this last week so i hope you enjoyed seeing what we ate again don't forget to check out laura's video as well and if you enjoy seeing videos like this let me know down in the comments below and i will make some more because this was really fun to film but thank you for watching and i will see you next time bye